In this video, we want to evaluate the trig integral given here. If you want to give it a try, go ahead and pause the video, and I'll be right back. Okay, and this one we have an integrand that's a rational expression. So you might think of partial fractions here. And the denominator factors, the perfect square, it factors into x squared plus 2, quantity squared. But partial fractions in this case won't do you any good. It'll just give you back the same thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a uh, trig substitution. So I'm going to let tangent of theta equal to x over the square root of 2. And this will imply that x equal to square root of 2 times tangent of theta. So dx would equal the derivative of tangent of secant squared. So this would be square root of 2 secant squared theta d theta. So let's uh, put that in here then. We have an x squared right here. So that would be this squared right here. So that's squared. That'll give me a 2 tangent of theta. And this is a good radical 2 here. And then this quantity is squared. Okay, we're looking at the inside here. And here we got the plus 2 inside the parentheses. Then we square this, this will be 2. And this will be a tangent squared theta. Plus a 2 here. And then we can factor out the 2. That will give us tangent squared theta. And factoring out the 2, this will be a 1 here. And then we do a substitution here for this expression, tangent squared theta plus 1. There's an identity of that. And that's equal to secant squared theta. So we've done the inside part here, x squared plus 2, but then that's squared. So let me just square this. That'll give me a 4, and then it'll be secant to the fourth theta at the dx here. So then we do a substitution here. So in the denominator, this x squared plus 2 quantity squared, that's the same thing then using the uh, trig substitution as 4 secant of theta to the fourth power here. And then we need everything in terms of theta now. So now dx right here can be replaced by this. So this will be the square root of 2, second squared theta, d theta. Just get rid, get rid of some of this here. Okay, so then put the equals over here. Continue on this side. You got second to the second, second to the fourth. So we can reduce that. And my integral here. And I'll have the square root of 2 over 4 outside here is a constant. So this cancels with two of these, so that'll give me a 1 there. So this then will give me d theta over secant squared theta. And this is equal to, I'm going to bring this over. Gonna go up and then one over secant squared. That's the same thing as cosine squared of theta. Secant and cosine are reciprocals, so we can do that. So this is cosine squared. We need to get this to the first power to make it easier to evaluate the integral. And there is an identity for cosine squared of an angle. And that would be 1 plus 
cosine of 2 theta over 2. I'm going to get double angle identities for cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. This is 2 theta. Now we can integrate here. I leave the square root of 2 and this should be 4 here. Here we have 2 over 4. Now we just integrate here. So this should be 1 over 2, taking the antiderivative or integral with respect to theta. That would be theta times the 1 half, I'll put it as theta over 2. This would be plus the integral of cosine is sine. So this would just be a sine of whatever angle you're dealing with, in this case 2 theta. And the derivative of 2 theta with respect to theta is 2, so that comes down in the denominator. So this gives me a, another factor of 2, so this will be a 4 here. And we have the constant of integration. Put that a bit, I'll put that uh, later on when I finish. So now we pretty much have the, the integration done. I could put a constant here, and that's pretty much the answer, except we always go back to the original variable, which is, which is x. So let's remember that the tangent of theta was equal to x over 2, or x over the square root of 2. So taking the tangent inverse of both sides here, I can get that theta is equal to tangent inverse, or arctangent if you want to use this arctangent of x over square root of 2. And this, is, this would be done here. So let me just carry this over here. Be the square root of 2 over 4. Multiplying this result here. And that's uh, so this I'll put the uh, value we got. This will be tangent inverse of x over radical 2. And then I'm going to do this over here on the side. So this will be sine of 2 theta. So I'm looking at this part right here, simplify this. So sine of 2 theta over 4 can be simplified. Let's use an identity for sine of 2 theta. There's one that says that sine of 2 theta is the same thing as 2 sine theta, cosine of theta. And that's over 4. So this is going to reduce to 1 half. And then I need my little triangle. Draw me a triangle to, to finish this problem here. So this would be theta here. And this would be x here. This would be the square root of 2. So then the hypotenuse of this triangle would be the square root of x squared plus 2. So now we have to deal with this right here. Sine of theta and cosine of theta. So let's just say sine of theta, look at the triangle, it's opposite over the hypotenuse, so this would be x over the length of the hypotenuse, that's x square root of x squared plus 2. And then cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so this would be the square root of 2 over the square root x squared plus 2. And then you got the one half here. So you multiply these out, then we have, and it's got a square root of two and the one half. So let's write it up out in front here. Got the square root of two over two, and then that'll give me a put in parentheses here. This will be an x over. Then you got radical x squared over uh, the radical of x squared plus two times the radical of x squared plus two. That gives me the square root of x squared plus 2 squared, which would just give me an x squared plus 2. And then we have the constant of integration. And then this one here, we had a 1 half from this, this, this one here. We got the, we put in the value of theta as tangent inverse of x over 2, but we had the 1 half right here. Okay, so I'm going to put a 1 half right there from over here. 
goes in like that. And then the next part, radical 2 over 2 times x over x squared plus 2 times your constant integration. And you can leave the answer this way. Sometimes uh, when you look at problems from a textbook and they give you the answer in the back, the answer might be written different. For example, here they could have multiplied by radical 2. So you could have a 1 fourth out here and then they multiply this by radical 2. You get radical 2 over 2 instead of what you have there. Or on this one, you multiply this one by radical 2. You get 2 over 2, so this would just be a 1. But anyway, just keep in mind that sometimes the answer would be simplified a little bit different than what you might have. But if your instructor sees that, he or she will, should give you the credit. So that's the result for that one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.